In a democracy, we don't have the same kind of inherent ruling class which preserves and promotes culture. And this has always been the problem that the United States has, is that we have had difficulty in having what really is a unified culture, in the same way that a lot of countries, well, most, mostly all countries, have some kind of you know, inherited culture. And I would argue that we do, we have it in many ways really inherited the culture of England, but it's not always uh, in the same clear way, as you might see in the UK. So what Cooper sees as he observes the United States is that the US privileges vulgar entertainment. You know, he notes that in, he cites Italy as an example. He says, when I visit Italy, he says, even the, the common people, they, they, go to, they go to operas. And he says, you know, why, why does that matter? Why is that good that they're going to operas? Well, he says, well, what's beneficial about a culture in going to see operas is that the operas contain the classical stories of a culture, right? You can talk to the, the, the people that, you know, the average person, at least in, in his time, uh, and, you know, opera still has a significant place in, in Italy, but that's, you know, they, they know the stories of the ancient Greeks. They know the biblical narratives because opera was the means by which these things uh, were, were passed down. And he says, you've got training in virtue, right? These things, they talk about what's virtuous, what's not virtuous. There is inherent goodness and beauty in these performances. But he says, in the United States, people instead are reading gossip columns. He doesn't call them that, but essentially that's what, what he's talking about. People like sensationalism. People are, they just want to be entertained in the United States. They're not looking for something that has transcendent value when they are looking at the forms of entertainment that they take in. And so Cooper is already seeing at his time that you don't have this kind of unified culture in the United States, but instead you have a culture that is really tied together by two things. One is entertainment, as he clearly says, but the other is money. And, and this is the problem when in our culture, not having that kind of, you know, class that people are looking up to is social differentiation, I mean, stratification to some degree is just necessary. It's how humans function, okay? Um, you know, watch a group of kids, play a game, somebody takes the leadership role. If they don't, like, the game can't function. We operate with, within hierarchies. It's just how humans are. Okay, so if you try to ignore hierarchies, and Cooper's going to talk a bit about this, then you're, you're just going to have one anyway, but it's a hierarchy that, that simply has no, um, nothing standing behind it that's been thought out, right? So in America, because we're, we're so significantly concerned with wealth, those at the top of the chain just become those who have the most money. And if you're talking about the, you know, the, the top class in the United States, the elites, and you know, when you say elites, you think of a lot of the like public figures maybe that are out there. A lot of the elites are people that you never see. They are very wealthy families that fund the things that they want to fund to benefit their own particular interests. And so it has historically, really in the United States, been money more than anything else that creates that elite class. The fact is this, we need to acknowledge that an elite class in our society is going to exist because an elite class in every society exists. And I don't think the right response is to say, all the elites are bad. Instead, it's to say, we need an elite that is good. There are going to be people that have more power and culture than others. Right? It's just a reality. But Cooper says, what America needs is a class of gentlemen. Is a calling that I think speaks to us. He says, we need a group of people in the United States that not by birth but by intentionality are dedicated to promoting and preserving cultural values. What I'm really talking about here is the transcendentals, right? Truth, goodness, and beauty. And so Cooper calls us to say, we need to have an intentional group of people that purposefully adheres to these transcendentals and learns and teaches and preserves them in you know, their cultural artifacts in one way or another. 
And he says the benefit of this is that he says the US is a meritocracy. And because of that, we don't have to just rely on family heritage. It's kind of ironic that Cooper's saying this because he's, you know, he's kind of is elite because of his family heritage too. But, um, but what he's saying is you have more social mobility in this way. You don't just have to, because in an aristocracy, you know, you've got these people that kind of control culture, but they may not be equipped to do so at all. It may not be their temperament to do so. And they may do it rather poorly. And he's saying in the, in the democracy, we have the freedom to kind of move up and down, to maybe move into uh, that, that group regardless of your family lineage.